In at number 10, Kris Jenner. Chris is the manager or momager of the Kardashian brand which must take some sort of knowledge and intellect to complete. However, in 2012 she used Twitter in a very bizarre way. Chris tweeted out, I feel like there's a giant meatloaf inside of me. Um, too much information, Chris. Just eat some prunes and drink some Pepto-Bismol and that meatloaf should slide right out. In at number 9, Charlie Sheen. While attempting to help out Justin Bieber, Charlie Sheen thought he was sending out a private message on Twitter. However, instead, he tweeted out his phone number to his 5 million plus followers. Call me, bro? Who knew the king of Tiger Blood and Bieber were so close? I'm sure that number is disconnected now, but can you even imagine the volume of phone calls and text messages that he was getting? If he was using an iPhone, it probably caught fire. I mean, we're talking thousands of texts and calls, at least. It's embarrassing and really shows his age. In at number 8, Amanda Bynes. In 2012, Amanda Bynes' entire Twitter account was embarrassing to say the least. I mean, look at this photo she tweeted out. Something was seriously wrong with her mental state. After she was arrested for drunk driving, Bynes tweeted at then President Barack Obama, Hey, at Barack Obama, I don't drink. Please fire the cop who arrested me. I also don't hit and run. The end. Yes, because Barack Obama has nothing on his schedule that day, totally has the afternoon free to scroll through Twitter and then make some phone calls to get Amanda Bynes out of jail. The audacity of celebrities that think they can live outside of the law. In at number 7, JK Rowling. The author of Harry Potter will go down as having some of the most savage tweets out there. She has a very strong passion for shutting down trolls. In reply to someone mocking her wealth, JK Rowling said, I'd type a longer retort, but these diamond buttons really hurt my fingers. <laughs> Although sometimes you can take things a little too far, and JK Rowling does that sometimes as well. In response again to a hater who said, glad I caught this article on Yahoo, I will now burn your books and movies too, JK Rowling replied, well the fumes from the DVDs might be toxic and I've still got your money, so by all means borrow my lighter. That is an insane thing to say to someone that is criticizing your work, and we're just going to leave it at that. In at number 6, Paris Hilton. Back in September of 2010, the Hilton Hotel heiress was arrested in Las Vegas, Nevada for possession of cocaine. Within the police report, they noted that the substance was found in a Chanel purse that she publicly denied was hers. She was insistent that the purse did not belong to her to avoid charges, of course. However, if you took a quick glance at her Twitter page, the clout monster was barking and she couldn't help but tweet this out. Love my new Chanel purse I got today, and then she attached a photo of the purse. This is next level embarrassing. When your vanity is the reason that you get caught red handed, something's gotta change. Either that or stay off of Twitter. In at number 5, Kim Kardashian. Clearly Kim K needs to brush up on her politics because the embarrassing tweets that she puts out about the Middle East sent an enormous wave of backlash her way. In the middle of the Israel-Hamas conflict, she tweeted out, praying for everyone in Israel. Then immediately following that she said, and praying for everyone in Palestine and across the world. Oh, that's why there's been no peace in the Middle East for centuries, because Kim Kardashian has yet to pray for them. Well done, Kim. Well done. Following the backlash, she did decide to delete the tweets amongst death threats and very negative messages of her original pro-Israeli position. Kim would later clarify in a blog post that she was just wishing for a peaceful resolution. Yes, because all peaceful resolutions come from a Twitter account. In at number 4, Hulk Hogan. I used to love Hulk Hogan as a kid, but if given the chance, I probably would not want to meet the man. On Twitter in 2013, he showed us the true meaning of cringe by posting this photo of his daughter Brooke. With the caption, Brooke's legs. Many of his own followers dogpiled the comment section with hashtag pervert and openly saying that their relationship was disgusting. It does kind of look like he's showing off a girlfriend of his, or even worse, pimping out his daughter to the internet. Judging by the fact that she's not even looking while the photo is being taken just ups the creep factor by a million. The funny thing with this embarrassing tweet is that the photo was removed from the locker site but the original tweet is still active. So either he tried to remove it and just did a terrible job or lockers may have taken it down due to its bizarre story of origin. I mean there's got to be a policy against posting creepy photos of your own daughter. In at number 3, Lil Jon. Lil Jon is one of the only Twitter accounts that makes you go, what? Okay. By far the most embarrassing tweet the rap superstar has ever put out though was this one from 2010. Was rushing home to take a dump and got caught behind a school bus dropping kids off. Longest 30 minutes of my life. 
<laughs> I love that it's in all caps so you can really feel the urgency in this tweet. I guarantee he typed this out from the can. From all accounts, his followers love this tweet with many leaving hashtag relatable in the comment section. I wonder if this incident will ever make it into a song. Let's hope. Let's hope. Come on, Lil John rushing home to the toilet. The puns just work so well. In at number two, Kylie Jenner. Yes, the second Jenner to make our list, but I had to include this embarrassing tweet because, well, it's hashtag relatable. The acronym YOLO has been around for a while. Drake only popularized the modern way to say carpe diem or live life to the fullest. I got this tattoo in June of 2011. Drake's song The Model premiered on Power 106 October 31st, 2011, and Kylie Jenner finally understood what it meant on December 26th, 2011. Really spelling it out there for her legion of fans. Many of the comments were, of course, sarcastic, calling her woke for knowing this or outright commenting that this has been established before. My favorite were the people that took it as a warning that she was about to do something crazy. Last but not least in our number one spot, Donald Trump. Donald Trump is well known at this point for flying off at the handle on his Twitter account. Much like Lil Jon, he loves him some all caps tweets. This tweet in particular though is embarrassing for a whole host of other reasons. On May 5th, 2016, Trump tweeted out, Happy Cinco de Mayo, the best taco bowls are made in Trump Tower Grill. I love Hispanics. There's just so much to unpack in, in what is possibly considered his most famous tweet. First of all, his policies definitely do not reflect that he loves Hispanics. Secondly, people did some research and apparently Trump Tower Grill didn't even sell Taco Bowls at the time that he made this tweet. So you can just imagine how staged this really had to be. Then on his desk, you can see a photo of his ex-wife Marla Maples from what appears to be an old school bikini contest. The photo also prompted a lot of people to start wondering if Trump was addicted to the methamphetamine drug Sudafed. As you can see in his open drawer, there's a few boxes stacked up. This claim was later confirmed to be false upon further investigation that revealed the box said Sudafed mucus relief day and night. So that was suggest that he just kept it in case he got sick. That did not stop the internet though from making wild claims that to this day is still a bit of a conspiracy as to whether or not the president is hopped up on pills. I mean, if his Twitter account is any indication of his mental state, I'd say he's on something. Kicking off our countdown at number 10 is the time that Zac Efron dropped a condom on the red carpet. <laughs> This is not fake news, you guys. This is very much real. To make matters worse, it was on the red carpet of the Dr. Seuss The Lorax premiere, which isn't the first movie you normally pick to bring a condom to. Like, I just wanna know, like, what were you planning for that night at a Dr. Seuss premiere? He ended up fessing up to it during an interview on the Today Show, but he couldn't really deny it anyways because it was all caught on camera. With a simple zoom in, you can clearly tell that it is a condom. Zach was just reaching in his pocket to pull some other items out, but then that fell out instead, and it just so happened to fall out directly in front of the paparazzi that was waiting for him. He ended up just laughing it off and said that he now does a full pocket check before going on the red carpet. Better to stay safe than sorry though. Am I right? I mean, it's not like a horrible message to be putting out there to his fans. Next up at number nine is the moment that Jerry Seinfeld refused to hug Kesha. <laughs> the moment went viral after it was caught on camera because it is painfully embarrassing to watch. I don't get secondhand embarrassment very easily, but guys, with this one I did. I just felt so bad for Kesha. Like I can only imagine being so excited to meet like your celebrity crush and then this happening. So what happened was they were both on the red carpet at the Night of Laughter and Song event. Jerry was in the middle of an interview when Kesha rushed over to him, all excited to meet him. She approaches him and tells him how much she loves him and she goes in for a hug and he just like completely rejects her. Can I give you a hug? No thanks. Please? No thanks. A little one. Yeah, no thanks. The moment is so awkward, she tries to hug him like three different times and he just keeps putting his hand up and saying no. What hurt her even more though is the fact that when she walked away, he asked the reporter who that was. He didn't even know that it was Kesha. But the two have spoken since the incident and Jerry said that she was very nice about it and that they laughed it off. And if you are wondering, no, he still has not hugged her. Sliding at number eight is Jennifer Lawrence. One day we will all be telling our grandkids about the time that Jennifer Lawrence tripped up the stairs at the Oscar awards. We won't have to just tell it though, we can also show them because it was all televised. She had just been called up to the stage to receive the Best Actress Award for her role in Silver Lining Playbook, and she completely tripped and fell on her way onto the stage. For winter's 
She explained what happened and said that she remembers her stylist telling her to kick and walk, meaning kick the dress out while you walk, but then she got distracted and forgot. The dress tucked under her feet and she went down. It was pretty much just game over from there. But she did handle it like a champ. She laughed and then got right back up and went to get her award. In our number seven spot is Justin Bieber pukes on stage. Back in 2012, it was the first night of his world tour and everything seemed fine at first. He was doing his thing, busting out his choreography and singing his hit song Out of Town Girl and then things suddenly took a turn for the worst. Out of nowhere, he turns his back to the crowd, bends over and just puked all over the stage. He immediately rushed backstage while his dancers continued on, basically trying not to slip in his vomit. He eventually made his return to the stage announcing that he was gonna just slow things down, but within a few songs, he was puking again. So he didn't just puke once, he puked twice in front of everyone. He posted a picture to his Instagram after the show with him curled up in bed and captioned it, milk was a bad choice, lol. Why would you ever drink milk before a show? That's bad for your vocal cords, boy. I don't even sing and I know that. Milk, <laughs> that is the worst idea I've ever heard. Moving on to number six, we have 50 Cent's terrible baseball pitch. Now, why would anyone care if he can throw a baseball or not? Well, he threw what's been called one of the worst opening pitches in baseball history. He was asked to pitch the game ball for the Pittsburgh Pirates versus the New York Mets game, and it is a pretty big deal to be invited as the opening pitcher. But his throw was so brutal that everyone could not help but laugh. His first pitch was not great. Just a bit outside. He was torn apart on social media, but in a lighthearted way, of course, because it's not that serious. He didn't have much of an excuse for it, so he just made a joke about it and wrote on his social media saying, I have a skeletal muscle injury on my left shoulder from excessive masturbation, so take it easy, lol. <laughs> this just prompted like a whole stream of hilarious responses from his fans. But, well played, my friend, that is funny. <laughs> Like threw it to the left, like literally, I don't know where you were looking, but it wasn't that way. Halfway through list number five is Ashley Simpson's lip syncing controversy. It's hard to forget her epic SNL singing fail from 2004 that pretty much ended her entire music career. Now, I don't wanna laugh at the fact that her career was affected by this humiliating moment, but at the same time, why are you lip syncing, girl? You are a live performer. If you haven't seen this footage before, she was performing her song on SNL and the music track started playing behind her as she was starting to sing the song, but the timing was kind of off and she just got completely exposed for lip syncing. It was extremely awkward and then you could tell that she didn't know what to do, so she just started doing this like weird dance Irish gig thing, which just made everything even more awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah, the whole thing was just pretty embarrassing. Here now at number four is Katy Perry's hilarious cake fall. Ever since she came into the spotlight, she's been known for her crazy costumes, rainbow wigs, and wild stage props. Like a giant cake, for example. During one of her performances at the MTV's Latin America Awards, Katie was singing her hit song, I Kissed a Girl, and she dived into a giant cake. Now you might think she could have settled for a fake one, surely they have cool props like that nowadays, but she chose the real deal instead. But when she got off the cake and was covered in it, she continued to sing, but slipped and fell onto the floor. The best part was she kept trying to get back up, but she just kept slipping and falling down again. Like her guitar player is trying to help her and she just can't stay on her feet. She was falling all over the stage as she struggled to get up and stay on her feet all while singing. It was honestly so great to watch. I don't mean to laugh you girl, but that is hilarious. In our third spot is Janet Jackson's iconic nip slip. This moment will forever be remembered and it would have been even if it wasn't televised all over the world. It was back in 2004 when Janet paired up with Justin Timberlake to perform at the Super Bowl halftime show. But by the end of their performance, they gave a whole new meaning to the phrase wardrobe malfunction. At the end of the song, they were performing some of their rehearsed choreography and Justin was supposed to pull off part of her costume to relieve like more red costume underneath, but instead he exposed her bare breast. Not only to the crowd, but to the TV audience of over 140 million viewers. Taking over our number two spot is Steve Harvey announces the wrong winner. Back in 2015, he was asked to host the Miss Universe pageant, which means you only have one job to announce the winner. 
He proved to be a reliable host for three years, so people were shocked when he announced the wrong winner and didn't realize it until after everyone was celebrating her win. Like she literally did the flowers, the crown, everyone was cheering. Yeah. He announced that Miss Columbia had won the competition, but then realized that she was actually the runner up and the actual winner was Miss Philippines. I have to apologize. He actually had to walk back on stage and revoke his declaration and then tell Miss Philippines that she is not in second place, she is in first place. The whole thing was super uncomfortable to watch and you can't help but feel so heartbroken for Miss Columbia who just thought that she had won the entire thing and then had it taken away. Taking our number one spot is Fergie peed herself on stage. <laughs> She recalls it as the most unattractive moment of my life. She's the first to admit that it was one of the lowest points of her career. Back in 2005, she was performing with the Black Eyed Peas and says that she was rushing to get on stage because they were late. It was a Friday and they were driving down the freeway, so they got stuck in horrible traffic. They knew that they had to start the show immediately when they got there, so she didn't have time to go to the bathroom beforehand. While they were performing Let's Get It Started, she started running across the stage and began jumping around and that is just when it came out, literally. She said that her adrenaline was going and it just kind of happened and she was so embarrassed. Despite the pee though, she kept on singing like nothing had even happened, even though it was super obvious to the crowd and the whole thing was caught on camera. I don't mean to laugh girl, but you know what? We've all pissed ourselves at one point in time. So no shame, don't even feel bad. Not quite like that though, but. And at number 10, Cara Delevingne. You do, you, seem, you do seem a bit, a bit irritated. Perhaps it's just us. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just you. This interview was an absolute train wreck. And because it felt like the interviewers were constantly disrespecting Kara, she was in savage mode the whole time. The interview started off with her being referred to as Carla. Yikes. Cara was being interviewed to promote the new movie Paper Towns with Good Morning Sacramento. I think the interviewers didn't mean to offend her with their questions, but Cara is clearly very sarcastic, so when she tried to be sarcastic, they took it as being rude, and then Cara got irritated as the questions became even more rude, so it was just really a downward spiral. The worst part was when another guy hopped into the interview and flat out asked her why she can't be more enthusiastic. Then someone else chimed in, quote, you seem a little irritated. We'll let you go take a little nap and maybe get a Red Bull. Cara then decided to walk off in the middle of the interview and I really can't blame her. And at number nine, Tyra Banks. Okay, I'm gonna try to grab, grab him, okay? <gasps> no, okay, what if ready? he jumps on me? No, 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 oh, hold I got on. him. Ready? I'm gonna hold him right on my lap. There, there we go. go. Oh my God, yeah. I don't like him either. I don't really like him either. Oh my God, he's scared. In 2007, during an episode of The Tyra Banks Show, Tyra ended up completely embarrassing herself after an animal expert brought out a porcupine. I'm not sure if producers knew that she hated porcupines or if it was a coincidence, but once the animal was brought out, Tyra decided to get away from it by sitting on top of her couch. But the couch ended up disconnecting, tipping over, and Tyra fell to the ground. Everyone had a good laugh while the guests helped her up. It seemed that the porcupine wasn't really a threat at all and it really didn't care that the whole debacle even happened. It was just sitting there eating its treats. Honestly, adorable. And at number 8, TJ Miller. This interview was incredibly embarrassing because TJ Miller was completely wasted during it. And you can tell Colbert was just trying to keep things under control the whole time. The interview starts off pretty uneasy with Miller talking about how Colbert is his wife's favorite comedian, which is, you know, a little awkward because Miller himself is obviously a comedian. Both of them had a laugh at that. But then TJ starts getting so annoying that Colbert genuinely looked mad. At one point, Miller is trying to make a joke about the Critics' Choice Awards, and while everyone is incredibly confused, he smashes an egg on his face, getting some egg on Colbert in the process. Miller finished off the segment by touching Colbert with his creepy skeleton hands. Definitely got secondhand embarrassment watching that. In at number seven, Danny DeVito. This one is pretty embarrassing, but more so adorable. This interview took place on The View, and it's hard not to crack a smile while watching it. The interview actually starts with DeVito admitting that he was hung over AF as he was out drinking with George Clooney the night before. Humble brag, I see. He also said he had seven lemoncellos right before the interview, and that they were finally catching up to him. He then starts talking about President Bush and making crazy facial expressions and noises to imitate him. Then when he literally looks like he's either gonna fall asleep or pass out, Rosie O'Donnell brought him over to cuddle. I'm sure he was embarrassed after this, but it just made me love him even more. And at number six, Vin Diesel. He's so beautiful, I'm in love. 
I'm in love with the interview. <laughs> this has to be my favorite interview moment of all time. And if you watch the Age Three podcast, you've probably already seen it. The interview went down in 2016 at the Comic Con Experience in Brazil. The actor sat down with Brazilian journalist Carol Morena to promote his upcoming film, XXX Return of Xander Cage. But I don't think he actually said anything about the film because the entire interview he was just talking about how the reporter looked. Basically, right in the beginning of the interview, he blurts out, quote, God, you're so beautiful. Then talking to the crew, he added, quote, My God, she's so beautiful, man. Am I right or wrong? Look at her. How am I supposed to do this interview? Look at this woman. She's so beautiful. Talk to me, baby. <laughs> And trust me, that's literally the tip of the iceberg. The reporter talked about the experience in a YouTube video where she said that she didn't know how to react to his advances, so she basically just laughed the whole time. This one is honestly impossible to watch without cringing. Halfway number five, Dakota Johnson. You all should know about this cultural reset by now, because this interview kicked off Ellen DeGeneres' downfall. The interview kicks off normally with Ellen asking about Dakota's 30th birthday party. Ellen asked how the party was because she wasn't invited. Without a second thought, Johnson claps back, quote, actually no, that's that's not the truth, Ellen. Then going on to say how she made a point to invite Ellen after Ellen gave her a ton of crap about not inviting her the year before. With Dakota adding, quote, ask everybody, ask Jonathan, your producer. Then Ellen's producer confirmed she was invited with Ellen responding, quote, why didn't I go? Oh yeah, I had that thing. The party was probably in Malibu. That's too far for me to go. The interview managed to somehow get even worse when they started talking about Tig Notaro and Dakota said that Tig was her favorite comedian, making the interview even more uncomfortable to watch. In at number four, the Kardashians. This interview is so legendary, I'm sure you've seen it memed online. Everyone always asks what the Kardashians are famous for, and the common answer is that they're famous for being famous. But things got ugly when Barbara Walters asked the same question to the Kardashians. While Barbara Walters was interviewing the Kardashian family as a part of her 10 most fascinating people 2011 special, she just said what we were all thinking. While talking with the family, she asked, quote, you don't act, you don't sing, you don't dance, you don't have any, forgive me, any talent. <laughs> And the Kardashians definitely did not disagree that they don't have talents, but Chloe did kind of clap back, adding, quote, but we're still entertaining people. Awkward. And at number two, Wendy Williams. This moment was probably a little embarrassing for Wendy, but it was incredibly shocking and scary for those that were watching it. During a live broadcast of the Wendy Williams show, Wendy suddenly fainted to the ground. It was a Halloween episode, so Wendy was wearing a Statue of Liberty costume. She started to introduce the next guest, but heavily slurred her words. All of a sudden, she gets a terrified look in her eyes and starts stumbling, then suddenly she falls to the floor. Thankfully, after she was looked at, she was fine. She continued filming the show. The next day, she addressed it, saying, quote, I'm a 53-year-old middle-aged woman going through what middle-aged women go through, if you know what I mean. The costume got hot. All of a sudden, right before passing out, I felt like I was in the middle of a campfire. Also adding that anyone who was trying to take her purple chair was gonna have to wait a long time. And finally, number one, Jimmy Fallon. This one's a mix of embarrassing and endearing. While Nicole Kidman was on the Jimmy Fallon show, they were reminiscing about the last time that they met. When they were both going over their version of the night, Kidman ended up admitting that she had a huge crush on Fallon at the time. And she even asked their mutual friend to set them up on a date, which was the time that they actually met up. However, Fallon had no idea it was a setup. He thought it was just some sort of you know business conversation. So he was a perfect gentleman and never made a move. Throughout the entire interview, Jimmy is realizing that he had a shot with Nicole Kidman but totally blew it. Kidman even said she assumed that he was gay when he didn't make a move on her. 